Welcome to another episode of Extreme Memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Of course, Extreme Memories on the 15th and the 30th of every month. I'm Chris Kloss. I'm your host, and I'm happy to be here and happy to tell you that this is a very retrospective, intricate, and special episode looking back at a phenomenal year we've had here at Extreme Memories and for the folks running the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. It's been a hell of a year. And first and foremost, I want to thank all you fans for making this a reality, for making this special, and for allowing me to reconnect with guys that I haven't seen in years, decades, some of them. And it's been a wild roller coaster ride. And man, oh man, I can't tell you how much it means to me. And to thank all our guests, all of them. And we're going to show you all the highlights, the best ofs from 2021. Ever since we launched back in 2020, we had a hell of a time during that tenure. We launched July 31st of 2020, the same date, anniversary date for when XPW first debuted back in the day and July 31st, 1999. So 2020, I mean, we started off with the bang. We had so much support and believe me, I've read all the comments and I can't thank everybody enough for everything they put into the show. Uh, everybody's sacrificing their time. And again, all of the fans for your support. Right now, we're going to take you back to 2021 as we forge forward into 2022. All of us here at the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel and Extreme Memories, of course, looking forward to another great year of new episodes. Right now, we're going to take you back. This, once again, a very special best of year in review of 2021 for Extreme Memories. Right now, let's go to, oh, Chico, yeah, that guy, Rivera, come on. Just kidding. One of the greats, Pat Howitt, of course, my brother, behind the mic, he and I, a lot of history together, and what a way that was to kick off 2021 with my co-host, my brother for life, Larry Rivera. And even later on in 2021, we had another great episode with the two Rivera's colliding, Juan Tastico and Larry Rivera, finally getting these two together, history made, and it was done right here on Extreme Memories. And uh, knowing both those guys, knowing how great they are on the mic and just in the back hanging out, it was so awesome to finally get these two guys together because there was a lot going on there behind the scenes with these two guys. And finally, let's say the, uh, the hatchet was underneath the old dirt. It was buried finally between these two. We had Sabu on. We had Pogo the Clown. We had Chronic from the West Siders. I mean, the list goes on and on. And we're going to continue that list into 2022. But right now, let's take a look at the first clip. This was Chico, Larry Rivera, he and I reuniting anywhere in public for the first time since back in the day. And we talk about right here the dynamic that we had between myself and Larry Rivera. I think everything flowed once you and I got comfortable with each other. And when we kind of felt like how we're going to stick sh this and bounce off of each other. Because you were the heel. I was the face. You you applauded the heels. And I, the, how could you, Rivera? You know, all that stuff. And 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 then. And then know, yeah, the, 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 I, I'm sorry to cut you off there. But the one thing, it's it's like, even though I, I took the heel, the, the heel way, I still was not down with the, the with the violent crap. Violent crap. Yeah. <laughs> because I was trying to emphasize that old school, you right. know, like right. You know, catch as catch can, Greco Roman. <laughs> yeah. 
Chick or Stanislav, Stanislav Sibisko. Yeah, I remember one time you you like you didn't really do it, but we were on the commentary in the booth and and like Chico, why did they have to use the, the garbage can, Chico? <laughs> in the in the, the light tube. This is for the you put it out on the curb once a week. The trash man is coming. This is what it's made for and the light bulb is when it's dark, you turn the light on, Chico. And then and then, uh, and then you're like, all you need right there. Instead of this, you put one half Nelson on like the catch can, and then like you would say, "See here, this is how you do it." Please, like, get your hands off of me, Rivera. And then we weren't doing anything, but we were just talking, no. and that's yeah. all you had to say. You yeah. just had to say, "How does this feel?" And I would just, I would go off like, "Oh, would you get your hands off of me, Rivera? Stop it! We're calling the action." <laughs> and and it was just too much fun, dude. It was it was it was just Good great. Times. And I remember those nights too, man. If you remember, one of us would have the laughing bug. And, and, and dude, we could not get through some of that because I would start laughing or you would start laughing. And I just remember one night where like, this was when we were uh, standing in front of the big X at the, the second office. And it was to the point where like, Neither one of us could even make eye contact doing <laughs> doing our doing our wraparounds because it would be like we would just bust up to the point where like Rob and Kevin would get pissed at that. But then we got to the point where like they were starting to laugh too. And it was just like it was just great, man. It was it was the best, dude. Oh man. Remember that one uh where we did when we did it outside? We did the, 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 and it was, and the plane came, all right, Chico, <laughs> the Aurora Black flying, making yeah. sure, making sure we are, got everything right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Larry Rivera, one of the greats, and I was honored to be his partner. By the way, a little trivia. What do I right now have in common with how Larry Rivera was looking during that episode. A little trivia for you fans, if you can drop the answer in the comment. Huh, you might get it right. You never know. Now, look at that. Larry Rivera, he and myself, we could have kept going on for hours, maybe even days. That was just scratching the surface of him and I connecting, bringing back memories. Because again, he and I, we were there for everything together. So we shared so much, and we still do to this day. Now, we're going to move on in this best of 2021 episode of Extreme Memories. Once again, fans, we want to thank you. Can't thank you enough. The 15th and the 30th of every month, check it out. The very mysterious, oh, too, yeah, gosh. Talk about nightmares. Now, this guy, Tool one of the most interesting characters in not just XPW, but arguably in professional wrestling. You never saw anything like this before. How dark, how mysterious, and a character that was really pushing the envelope, especially for back then, especially for today, actually. But his name, Gary Key. And talk about a guy who I go back with. I mean, when I was a fan, I remember seeing this guy at the LA Sports Arena, at Huntington Beach at WCW's Bash at the Beach, and Long Beach for WWF superstars of wrestling television taping. And he was very intricate part of Southern California with the WWF, WWE, along with guys like Jesse Hernandez. We talk about that quite a bit. And uh, talking about uh, uh, making, a, making a mark, what do they call it? May, uh, going outside? A mark outside? Huh. Anyway, um, I had whatever you call one of those moments when he showed us a very special surprise. Let's check out Tool Gary Key right now on this best of 2021 Extreme Memories. At uh, WWE house shows, Timekeeper's Table and all that. Wait, 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 wait. Ring announcing, Jesse would be refing. W wow, yeah. look at that. Holy That's an original Andre oh Hogan. Uh, all the old school guys hit this pad. 
And I used to have a whole full set, but oh because of schools and people taking them, giving them away, this is my last one. So this is very, to me, very special. And uh, I'm going to keep it, and I'm not giving this away to anybody. And you can see this came off the actual ring that went to Southern California in the whole Midwest. I, I'm I'm literally like stunned right now. I, well, I'm, you know, people come and say, "Oh, W." No, no, no. WWF. That was the old school, you know. And Vince, it was WWF when right. Vince's dad owned it, and it went WWF. And I, 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 the WWE. I kind of follow some of it a little bit. There are some people I know that still work. Or well, mm -hmm. no, they they switched over to the other promotion. Right. But it's uh, that to me, it's WWF. Now, that's a class act right there. Gary Key, want to thank him, Tool. Of course, um, man, such great memories with him and really one of the good guys in this business. Uh, class act all the way, uh, professional, of course. And again, just a real, real good person and happy to have him on Extreme Memories. Finally, yeah, we, yeah, a lot of people, that's, that's who was under the mask, Tool. Now from there, we go to another big man, another legend, another icon in this best of 2021 of extreme memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. By the way, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button and be instantly subscribed to the Wrestling Chatter. Um, but Vicious Vic Grimes, I want to thank him off the top because uh, Vic doesn't grant too many interviews. And uh, he did that as a favor to me. Um, he and I became pretty close throughout the years. Uh, XPW, Wrestling Society X, and countless events in between, before and after. Um, but we uh, talked about, of course, you can't talk about Vic Grimes unless you talk about New Jack. And we want to pay our tributes right now to the late, great New Jack. Um, we were actually uh, in talks about getting him on Extreme Memories, and it was looking like it was going to happen, and then the unfortunate passing. So uh, all our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and friends, and uh, rest in peace, New Jack. Um, we'll do that interview one day down the road. But um, speaking of New Jack, speaking of Vic Grimes, it's kind of like when you see Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. You can't talk about Larry Bird without Magic. You can't talk about Magic without Larry. Same thing once again for Vic and New Jack. And uh, of course, we know the history between these two. Of course, in ECW, the scaffolding, the big injury, and then free fall, XPW's free fall, the Grand Olympic, one of the most iconic, scary moments in the history of not just XPW, of professional wrestling. And uh, we all thought he might have been dead that night. And I think all you fans, most of you know what I'm talking about. But there was some behind-the-scenes stuff, beef, going on with Jack and Vic. And at this moment, keep in mind, fans, when this interview was conducted with Vic Grimes, New Jack was still with us here. And he died shortly after this aired. But um, Vic Grimes, let's say, steps up to the plate right here and has a direct message for the man who was alive in this time, New Jack. And he has a direct statement and message for the man now resting in peace. Let's take you back to our interview with Vicious Vic Grimes on this Best of 2021 Extreme Memories Year in Review. Uh, I do want to say one thing about Jack, okay? And hopefully if he's listening, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry if anything physically, if you really are hurt, and if I left a mark, and if you're damaged from anything that me and you have ever done in the past, I'm sorry. I did not mean to ever hurt you. Hmm. You know, shit happens. And uh, I hope you accept my apology. All right? 
I, I don't know how to say it any better than that. That was that was couldn't have said it better myself, and that was beautiful. And I'm yeah. sure I'm sure that will resonate. Um, but you know, by the way, fans, just to uh, that's that's totally credible right here. This is one of the most genuine people you'll meet in this business, and. And also, just to give it more credibility, uh, when Vic and I got back in touch with each other uh, before doing this show, talking about doing this show, you 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 expressed that to me as well, one on one with nobody else listening. You saw one of the class acts in professional wrestling. You saw one of the best big men in professional wrestling. And man, oh man, this guy! Talk about someone that's true. Talk about someone that never had a big head about himself. Even though he was in the limelight, he was a guy at one point in time that, man, everybody was talking about. This guy never changed. He always stayed the same in the back, which I respected and I admired and why I consider him a friend of Vicious Vic Grimes. And, man, what a message, huh, fans, for, the, for New Jack at the time. Again, New Jack was still living when this was going on. Once again, rest in peace, New Jack. Uh, talking about free fall and a very heartfelt apology, public apology. And I think good tributes need to be given to Vic Grimes. Um, much respect. Speaking of free fall, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most iconic moments in XPW history and at one of the most famous venues in all of North America, especially for professional wrestling, we're talking about Los Angeles's Grand Olympic Auditorium. The event was free fall, and it was historic on so many levels, no pun intended. But uh, that was the night when Vic Grimes and New Jack were up 40 feet in the air. And, of course, the rest is history. Right now, on this Best of 2021 episode, we're going to talk to Mike Inside Joke, Tickle Tickle, Hartsfield. Mike Hartsfield. Now, you saw him featured on Vice's Dark Side of the Ring. But we got him here first on Extreme Memories. Now, Mike Hartsfield was a jack-of-all-trades behind the scenes. Another very good friend of mine. And quite the legend, by the way, for, for you music lovers, this guy is a bit of a punk legend, especially in Southern California. Look him up. A very legendary guy in the punk scene. Now, he also obviously dabbled in professional wrestling, specifically XPW. And he was, again, one of the guys behind the scenes. So this was a very interesting interview for some of the fans that you know, you get to see some of the guys and how really the inner workings were happening behind closed doors in XPW. He was very instrumental in that free fall event unfolding the way it did. Now, we're going to take a look back on this best of 2021 Extreme Memories. We're going to take a look back at myself and Mike Hartsfield's interview when he talks about how free fall came about how it was allowed to happen it was permitted but uh a little a little chuckle on my face because man i love this story uh we weren't uh, too truthful yeah to the old insurance company but we pulled it off anyway no insurance was ever gonna i digress let's go back let's talk to mike's hartsfield on this best of 2021 year in review special episode of extreme memories right here on the wrestling chatter youtube channel the the free fall show was incredible looking back on it for so many reasons but day to day and leading up to it was was really intense because um I just remember we're, we're advertising a 40 foot scaffolding on TV and this 40 foot scaffolding and we're flyering and we're out and we're 40 foot scaffolding and all this 40 foot scaffolding. And we would have, whenever we had a production meeting, nobody talked about the assembly of this scaffolding. <laughs> it just hadn't even come up in a group setting. And I just remember going to Kevin, like, Hey, like, is there, is there a plan? Do we have a contractor or somebody who's going to come out and build this thing? Cause like 40 feet is not like, Hey, we're going to go rent some parts and pieces and, and make something 
right. it doesn't tip over on the people. And uh, it was just kind of hummed and hawed. And, and I remember going, dude, if you're going to give this to me, give it to me now. Right. Like if I've got to start making calls and like figuring stuff out, then like it's a sooner the better. And I remember it was a week and a half before the show. And I, I drew up a schematic and I showed it to Kevin and it had the ways the guy was, guys were going to get up. It had the plank going across. It had placement, how it was going to be over the ring <clears throat> and started a chain of events of me lying to each person that had to have a part in this thing, whether right. it was the fire marshal, the insurance people, the guy building the scaffolding. And it was really like, I, I had to hide things from certain people and only right. give paperwork to certain things. And so we got the okay from the Olympic and they said, Hey, as long as the fire marshal signs off on it, we don't have a problem, you know, cause they need their fallback. Right. And so I got a company that say that said they were going to come do it. I said, you got to come Saturday morning and you can't pick it up till Monday morning because we didn't want to deal with anything else on the weekend. And the Olympic was fine with that. Mm. <clears throat> so they agree to the schematics. Uh, we agree on the budget. I don't remember what it was. Um, but the guys show up Saturday morning and we're all there Saturday morning. And uh, I remember that both the scaffolding company and the Olympic requested insurance, a rider for us to show we were covered and they mm -hmm. were covered. Mm -hmm. And I had made it on my computer with liquid paper and a typewriter. And I, I, I changed the date on an old insurance rider. Oh, so wow. I fax it to the Olympic. I fax it to the scaffolding guy. Everyone says, great. And so at the Olympic at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m., whenever we got in there, scaffolding guy shows up. He starts assembling this thing and bringing up the lighting truss like you did, the one, the boxing one that's over boxing wrestling. Yeah. It's for the ring that's over the <laughs> over the ring. So these guys are going up 40 feet and they hit that. Uh, the fire marshal shows up. <clears throat> signs off on the plans, has, says, have a great show. <laughs> After he starts talking about the sports arena and WWF and like, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's chat. Let's bro down. Let's, you know, oh, he signs off on the thing. And I'm like, great. And I look at the scaffolding guy and I say, see you Monday. Man. So interesting. Mike Hartsfield. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being a part of extreme memories. It was so good to connect with you, me and this guy. Not just wrestling we have in common. Good old rock and roll. Yeah, we go to a lot of shows, a lot of concerts together, dude. And, uh, man, this guy's just awesome all around. Very, very intelligent guy. Uh, obviously, musically, but for professional wrestling. So we hope you fans enjoyed that. Once again, my name is Chris Kloss. This is Extreme Memories. This is the best of 20. 21 year in review as we forge forward to 2022. Of course, January 15th, another new guest, another new episode right here on Extreme Memories, the 15th and 30th of every month, Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Oh, has this show been phenomenal to you fans? Yeah. Well, our next guest was phenomenal. Phenomenal Phil. That's right. This guy goes way back to the early, early, early days, the very first show of XPW back in 90s, 1999. And I go back even farther with this guy. But um, yeah, phenomenal film. Now, right now, we're going to take a look back at this interview with myself and phenomenal Phil. But we're going to talk about him in the ring him showcased in XPW, not as phenomenal Phil, but a very, yeah, uh, oh my, <laughs> oh wow, yeah. I'm gonna buy XPW. That's right, Mr. McPhenom. Hey, personally, I love this character, man. I freaking loved the Mr. McPhenom character. It was great. And uh, we introduced him. 
And it became a little bit controversial at the time because this was the whole time when the reunion show happened back in 2008 with Big Vision Entertainment. And uh, they got a lot of press. I was working for them in the offices back then as well. And um, uh, again, we got a lot of attention at that time compared to other non-WWE leagues. And um, man, oh man, uh, very funny, very controversial at the time. Uh, and good entertainment as far as I'm concerned. Let's take a look back at 2021 best right here. Extreme Memories, best of 2021 with a phenomenal guest, Phenomenal Phil. All right, Chris, you did a Vince McMahon impression. I, you probably don't remember it. It was, I think it was on the Baptized in Blood video. You remember when Damian Dallas threw up? Oh, like, yeah. That yeah, match? Know. He's and, got a Yeah, and you did the Vince McMahon. He's got a puke. You know? right, right. <laughs> and I, you know, you're you're just a clown in general. Like, that's why I always <laughs> love hanging out with you because you're yeah. always, like, silly and irreverent. And, like, you'd be like, oh, hello, <laughs> Vince McMahon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so... When Kevin asked, like, I had this character in a GXW that I was going to call Mr. McPhenom, and it was just me doing a Vince McMahon impression, but it was me doing an impression of you doing oh, a Vince McMahon impression. So oh, it's wow. my Mr. McPhenom is really oh, Chris Claus doing a Vince McMahon impression. Jeez. Who would have so, thought? It's, it's, yeah. I know, it's, it's very meta. Um, so Kevin asks me to do Cold Day in Hell, and he's like, oh, we want Phenomenal Phil to be in the, you know, Old, old, old fart battle royal or you know whatever you know there's always an old fart battle royal like with all the all the old all the all that kind of like random like has-been guys and i was like i was like still in my 20s and i was like right. i'm not a has i'm not I'm, i can't be i don't want to do this fucking battle royal thing so i kind of like went to the acting well and like kind of like got creative with it and i was like let me do you mr mcfeenum is like Vince bought WCW and ECW. Why the fuck wouldn't he buy XPW? Um, and I could call it the WE instead of WWE. Uh, so I I had just done a play where I had dyed my hair gray and like drew like wrinkles on my face. So I did the exact same thing and dressed like Vince McMahon <laughs> with the with the slacks and the and the and the the, the open shirt <laughs> and the and the sports coat and. I just filmed in my bedroom. I just put up a camera in front of a white wall. Right. And I did I did this like this. I just recorded myself doing a Vince McMahon impression and being like, I'm gonna buy XPW. And and, it, and it, because it was called Cold Day in Hell, it's like, oh, there was this perfect Vince McMahon line. It's gonna be a cold day in hell. And and then and, <laughs> and it, 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 yeah, it was it was yeah, Hartsfield loved it. Um and uh and kevin like i so and i gave so i gave it to kevin i was like hey dude i i made this if if you want to you know if you want to do something with it great like if not i'll still do the battle royal it's fine and he loved it he was like yeah. oh my god we, we got to do a whole match about this or we got to yeah. do a whole like series of vignettes for this and like you know we got to have you do a much bigger role at cold day in hell and i was yeah. like sweet Phenomenal, Phil. A phenomenal guest. Thank you for being on this show. And of course, man, I love that. Talking about the character, Mr. McPhenom. Oh uh, my! Uh, indeed. Yeah. All right. Indeed, we go to our next guest. And this is a guy named Vinny Massaro. Speaking of that Mr. McPhenom, that, you know, that mainstream big feel. Well, Vinny Massaro was one of those guys that uh, went out of his way on his own personal time to promote XPW on the mainstream. This is very interesting because uh, Vinny Massaro and his gal, yeah, all right, yeah. Hey, I'm not only saying that, but they said that about her on the Howard Stern show, a little beauty in the beast. That's all I'll say for the hint. But he went on, Howard Stern, he talks about that, sporting the old XPW logo. Now, back in these days, ladies and gentlemen, the industry was completely different. It wasn't so, let's say, oversaturated with a certain product, that product being pro wrestling. If you were on television back then, 
There was no internet. There was no YouTube. You were just one of those shows that was on television. So it was a bigger deal back then. I will say from personal experience of being on television back in those days. And again, if you got mainstream exposure, it again was a big deal. So we talk about that and he elaborates on his experience being in XPW, promoting that on the most famous radio show at the time. Of course, everybody knows Howard Stern, Vinny Massaro up next right here on the best of 2021 Extreme Memories. So if one of you guys are, uh, I'm a huge Howard Stern fan. So uh, yeah. if any you, the listeners are, but pretty much uh, when Howard got married to um to you know his wife, uh, they did like uh, everybody on in the on on the on the internet whatever saying that oh she's a hot wife and uh, you know Howard Stern's an ugly man. So what right. he did he started doing he started doing it hot, uh, you know hot wife ugly guy. Yeah. Um, like contest, and I was like, hey, let me just throw my, throw my picture. My wife is hot. Uh, God bless, God bless me. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, you know, and they liked it, and they flew me out. And uh, you know, at that time was when the XPW reunion, the cold day in hell, was happening. Oh uh, wow! That time okay. So that's so that's when I wore the XPW shirt. <laughs> I wore the XPW shirt on the Howard Stern show. Oh. So if you guys if you guys if you guys watch if you guys go on YouTube, you can see uh, me wearing an XPW shirt on the Howard Stern show. God bless. Vinny Massaro, thank you and thank you, fans. We hope that you are all enjoying this retrospective look right here on Extreme Memories, the best of 2021. And man, what a hell of a year it's been. Look at all the guests, not only 2021, but again when we launched back in 2020, looking forward to 2022 with more guests. And uh, speaking of guests, we're going to go to our next guest right here on the best of 2021 Extreme Memories, the tall, cool one. Yeah, Jake Lawless, another guy that was there in the infancy, the super early stages of XPW. But speaking of super early, even before XPW, this guy was a name on the outlaw, the indie scene in the United States to the point where he was hanging with his boys, one of those boys, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Pretty funny story here. Uh, pretty interesting story as far as them hanging out and fans approaching them, giving some attention to the tall, cool one. I say no more. Let's go back in time on this best of 2021 Extreme Memories. Jake Lawless. Taker comes up, says hello. Shawn Michael. Kane, I'm bullshit with Kane. Yeah, back then, he still had to wear his mask. Yeah. Right. The, the Rock was just new. He was still rocking my via. But right. He was just starting to get in that Nation of Domination thing. But right. everybody was cool as shit. Everybody was cool. You know, so, you know, and, I, and I'm doing some of these local shows, and these guys are acting like they're giant stars. And I'm like, you know. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's That's a good point right there. I mean, I mean, I, I've kind of run across that too, where it's like, we're all like, this is one of the reasons I like doing this show. For example, you know, XPW, whatever the stigma is and all this, now we're just seeing like, we're just regular guys that was interested in wrestling and wanted to make it and, and have fun and, and, and work in the business. And then all this stuff that goes along with it, it's like, we're all just normal guys. And and isn't that funny, though? You go into WWE, the guys that made it, they act more like normal guys than the guys that are just trying to be a star and I should be famous and all this stuff. It's We, we went to a couple of shows and we hung, we hung out and we were leaving it. And it was me, Brian Lee, my girlfriend, and Austin, Steve Austin. So we come up the back ramp and there was local wrestling fans there and they were yelling lawless down to us. And Stone Cold turns to Brian Lee and he goes, what the fuck they saying? And he goes, he goes, they're yelling for him. And Austin goes, don't acknowledge him. Just don't acknowledge him. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was funny. And then it was funny because they were all, they would all stay at this hotel in this town called Tinicum. They don't stay like in the, the Philadelphia airport is not really actually in Philly. It's right outside of it. Right. It's a little right. town called Tinicum. And they mm -hmm. all stay at, like, you know, the, 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 the smaller hotels out there so they can get yeah. their flight. 
And there's a there's there's been a, a a strip bar in this town for 30 years, but it doesn't say what it is. But everyone knows it's infamous. It's still there, you know. Wow. So I knew the guy that owned it, and I knew his sons and all. So I said to him, I said, "Hey, I go, I'm the WWF guys are up the street." I said, "Do you mind if I invite a few back?" And he goes, "No, no, tell them, right?" So I go back to the hotel, and like Cactus Jack was there, but he had his wife with him, and his kids were little at the time. Okay, and then. Um, so I go to the Harris guys. I go, dude, I go, there's a strip joint right down the street if you guys want to go get a beer. And they're like, no, there ain't. I go, yeah, there is. I'm from here. And they're like, they're like, we've been coming here two years. <laughs> there's no strip joint. I go, no. I go, you know the place with the camels painted on the side of it? And they're like, yeah. I go, that's a strip joint. They're like, get the fuck out. <laughs> so I walk in with them. I walk in with those two guys and Brian Lee and my girl. And like, dude, the people parted like the Red Sea. The tall, cool one, Jake Lawless. What more can we say? But thank you, Jake, for being a part of Extreme Memories. My name is Chris Kloss. This is the best of 2021 year in review of Extreme Memories on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Hey, producer, what's the, what's the next clip we're going to show? Uh-huh. Oh, yep, Sabu. Yeah, I, oh, I remember that. Hey, that was the, the first show where we had a banner finally, right? Uh-huh. And what, what are we going to be talking about exactly? Uh, what clip are we going to be showing? When he talks about... <laughs> We're going to be talking about Sabu, Atsushi Onita, the exploding ring steel cage death match, the first ever in North America that never happened. Uh, yeah. XPW, that's right, fans, was going to make history yet again. We talk about... Definitely the biggest missed opportunity in the history of XPW because it was a missed opportunity at the time for the entire wrestling industry. We were going to have at most likely the LA Sports Arena. Can you imagine this for a second, fans? Back in those times, in the year 2000, we were going to have the first ever exploding Steel Cage Ring Deathmatch in the United States. And it would have been showcased in a league like XPW that was already on television, home video. We talk about that, unfortunately, never happening. But there was a lead up to that match. A lot of interesting stuff happened. Onita and his crew came out from Japan. Sabu, of course, was here. Rob Black, Kevin Kleinrock, Josh Lazy. Myself, Rivera, and we were there. There was a big press conference that was held. Got a lot of mainstream media attention. I remember uh, KBC, KFI Radio in Los Angeles, and a few other media conglomerates, non-wrestling related, were actually there covering this press conference that was held not too far from the XPW offices at the time in Van Nuys. And uh, man, oh man, uh, I had to get into this with Sabu. And right now, at this moment in time, too, folks, uh, I'd like to pay tribute to um, uh, the love of his life, Super Genie, who unfortunately passed away shortly after we conducted this interview. This was her last public appearance anywhere on Extreme Memories. And they were obviously here together uh, talking as a team. So uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to her family, to Sabu, and take this moment to say rest in peace, Super Genie, and thank thank her for being a part of this and letting the fans see her one more time. Uh, Sabu talking about Atsushi Onita, the match that never happened, the match that should have happened, the match that would have changed everything. We're talking about the exploding ring, steel cage death match, Sabu Onita, the LA Sports Arena, Extreme Memories, best of 2021. Unbelievable. But you know, when you guys a big missed opportunity, big one. Oh, probably the biggest in company history, probably because because that was not just a missed opportunity for XPW, but that was a missed opportunity for the wrestling industry and the history it would have had. Because uh, I'm sure we would have had a stellar match, you know, you know, neither had good chemistry together. And, and I, I was begging for a match like that. I even almost had another match with him in Japan where we set up for another explosion match and that fell through somehow. But I, wow. I really wanted to wrestle him in an explosion match because I know I know uh, you know it'd be good. Yeah, looking back on that now, I'm sure Kevin Kleinrock wishes like, ah, oh, we should have just paid the 
well, however much it was, 15 grand, whatever it was, you look back on that now and you think of all the money wasted on other things and like, right. oh, yeah. But, but, but I will tell you this. I remember, I don't know if you remember this, Sabu, but we, we were, before we knew that match wasn't going to happen, you remember like you and Lazy on one of the, on one of the promo skits, you guys came to the office, knocked on the door and, and nobody answered the door. And then you, you laid out the Japanese flag. And I don't know if you really urinated on it or was it, was it, no, it was just like a, it was like yellow Gatorade or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, but that of all the crazy stuff XPW did, that was the one thing that, that took us off of uh, a lot of our syndicates on television. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's not your fault. It was, if that was just written for you to do, but, but my point is um, it's weird. It's weird. The things they, they, they choose, like we're doing all this stuff with sex, drugs, blood, barbed wire, but that's what got us off of television. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Like, yeah, but then, but then, as months went on, we we regained those those syndicates, you know, because fans, welcome back to Extreme Memories, right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. This is the best of 2021. I am your host, Chris Kloss. Let's say thank you to one of the icons, one of the legends, Sabu. We hope you enjoyed that moment in history. What a moment! Once again. Missed opportunity, extraordinaire. We're talking about that exploding ring steel cage death match. And let's not forget, never forget, rest in peace, Super Genie. Uh, her last public appearance anywhere, uh, right here on Extreme Memories. Now we go, we saw one. <clears throat> And we're going to see two, literally two, the second, Larry Rivera. I'm talking about Juan Tastico. That's right. Gabriel Ramos, Juan Tastico. Um, look, there was a lot of controversy. And we're going to get into that later. Once again, we had both of them on in Extreme Memories in 2021. But right now, this is the first episode of... Juan Tastico, it was him and I one on one in Extreme Memories, and um, dude, this guy and I, we were pals, man. We hung out and uh, got along great. And again, thank you, fans, for all this, and thank you for all our guests because this is a great example of reconnecting, not only with you fans, but allowing us to all reconnect. There have been guys that I've interviewed that they're talking to each other now because of this show and myself, no exception. I'm obviously I've interviewed all the guys I'm reconnecting with everybody. But like I said, myself on Tastico, Gabriel, he and I were really tight friends. And look, ever since this aired, we've been hanging out again. We've been going to uh, MPW, a shout out to Logan X in Chatsworth, California. Go to MPW YouTube, subscribe to them. I've been calling some action there. And um, 19801 Nordoff Place, Chatsworth, every Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Check them out. And uh, also, Gabriel Wantasico has been a guest on the Los Batos Locos podcast, the Red Bat, youtube.com forward slash the Red Bat. Check those shows out. Um, but yeah, man, we were connected. And I want to show you a clip of us just, man, reminiscing about the good times he and I had, the camaraderie we had. Of course, he came in with a lot of controversy at the time because he took over as Larry Rivera. And again, we'll get into that later when we show the clip of Pat Howard and Gabriel on the same episode. But right now, we want to go back in time, back this past year, 2021. And show you guys a clip, man, of him and I talking about one of those nights of doing the TV in the studio. And we were doing the wraparounds. And, man, we couldn't stop. The camera had to say cut. We were laughing. And um, he drops a great story about, at the time, dropping kayfabe, which was never done. And they did it. And it was just us joking around. 
And like I said, we couldn't get through the script. The cameraman had to cut. We had to start over again. So let's take a look back. Oh, shoot. I messed up. You want to cut? Exactly. That's what we were doing. Let's go back to one task to go right now. Extreme memory. Um, let's see. My, my overall experience was, was, um, as far as being, uh, you know, being able to, uh, work with you, uh, and web was fantastic. We had really good times. Uh, there were times obviously when the camera was rolling, um, during that time when we were shooting, even if it was, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning with, uh, Kevin beyond the camera, we'd, we'd have, you know, giggle fits and, and whatnot. And we had good times. I remember, um, I remember that one time and, and, and to his credit, Webb, Webb left it. He put it at the end of the, sh of the, of the episode where we were having one of those nights. It was just a, just a long night. And either, I don't remember if it was the script that was just hard to get through. Something about that night was hard to get through. And, and so we just needed a cut. And so you, do a masterful i don't know if the the uh audience if the if the xpw fans know this you do a masterful vince mcmahon and you do a, a dead on dead on vince mcmahon and a dead on finkel <laughs> howard finkel and i did not know this i had no idea and we we're doing we're, we're trying to shoot the show and for for whatever reason it's not going, it's like cut here. We're flubbing lines. I don't know what it is, but we can't get through the script to save our lives. And so we just kind of like, we're like, you know what? Shake it off, whatever. And you just started going off. You start doing your Vince and Kevin starts recording. Yeah. Well, you go off on a good, I don't know if it's like a minute or two, but it's, it's, it's a substantial amount of TV time. And Kevin's recording because we're just like, what? Well, we're like, we don't even know what to do anymore. So he records it. We get it out of our system, and, and then we go. We finish the show. Great. Watching the show at the end of the show, at, at the end credits or whatever, Web put it in the show. I know, you know, man. Total, you know, total, you know what, like, uh, there's no cave in. There's nothing. It's just you doing a bit. <laughs> And me, totally out of, I'm not doing Larry or whoever. I'm speaking regularly. Like, like this. What is this guy doing? I'm like, exactly. I'm just like, and I'm totally out of character because I'm, I'm you know, and it's it's probably, yeah, it's my favorite memory. Juan Tastico. Fans, welcome back to Extreme Memories, the best of 2021. I am your host, Chris Claus, and that was a joy uh, going back in time, seeing Juan Tastico, again, a good friend of mine. We're reconnecting to this day. One of the great things about Extreme Memories, I'm not just reconnecting with people, but other guests are reconnecting uh, with one another and with some of you fans. So thank you very much. Man, uh, Juan Tastico, he and I are reconnecting once again. MPW, Millennium Pro Wrestling. Check them out in Chatsworth, California, every Friday night at one nine. 19801 Nordoff Place. That's right. Every Friday night, 7 30 p.m. YouTube.com forward slash the Red Bat, the Los Batos Locos podcast. We've been a part of that, doing all these great projects now. Once again, a beautiful thing about extreme memories. Of course, extreme memories on the 15th and 30th of every month. We had a hell of a year, 2021, even when we started in 2020, and we're looking forward to 2022 right around the corner. Now, speaking of Wantastico, oh, his tag team partner in XPW, the big man, Pogo the Clown. Now, he got his due, but I think he didn't truly get his due. One of the great big men in professional wrestling and one of the most charismatic gimmicks of all time, characters, Pogo the Clown. The guy was John Wayne Gacy. You know, burying people in the basement. Who would have thought of this in professional wrestling? It was done by Pogo. What a better, there's no better person that could have pulled this off than Pogo himself. And uh, he commanded a lot of respect. And it was like the Andre the Giant stories. If he liked you, friend for life. If he didn't like you, get out of his way. And that's kind of how Pogo was in the back. And fortunately enough, I was a good friend of uh, his and he, I consider him a good friend of mine. And, um, and he does not grant interviews. 
Uh, so this was very special for him to do the show. He did it as a personal favor for me. And Pogo, thank you very much once again uh, for being a part of this and agreeing to do that. Now, talking about respect, this is very interesting, is that, of course, you know, the Sabus, the Shane Douglases, the Chris Candidos, the Big Dick Dudleys, the Terry Funks, all these big names uh, that were names prior to XPW coming in here. And Pogo the Clown didn't give a damn, all right, what you did and how big a star you were or anything like that. And he actually proved that against the insane clown posse when they came into XPW. They came in, Pogo kind of took exception to that. Who are these clowns? Literally clowns. And uh, I think a lot of you know the history behind that. But right now, we're going to go and take a look at what Pogo the Clown had to say about a very prominent guy that people would tend to kind of give a pass or maybe let's say show respect to. But with Pogo, you had to earn respect. And his comments, his opinion at the time, very interesting about the franchise Shane Douglas. Just so take a listen to what Pogo had to say on this, the best of 2021 Extreme Memories. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's like the first time I even heard about who Shane Douglas was because I really didn't watch a lot of wrestling to be able to know. I didn't watch ECW shit. Like I didn't know who the fuck he was. You know, he's just whatever. So like I remember hearing like, yeah, they're going to bring in this guy to try to to mold all you all guys. And I'm like, yeah, fuck him. You know, who the fuck? I don't give a fuck who you're bringing in. You right. know, so like, like not a bad attitude. I just didn't give a fuck who he was. You know, you know, do you right, want right. to fight me? You know, you want to fight, motherfucker? You know, let's fight. You know, maybe I won't kick you in your fucking face. And that 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 was to anybody over there. Hmm, right. So so I remember being in that venue and like being up there with Jerry Lynn in the in the ring with like Jerry Lynn. And I can't remember who else it was, but we did the Q and A for probably like a half an hour, and then Kevin had told us to like go mingle with the crowd like three at a time or whatever. Okay, right. I was over there and I was having a blast because I was like all in gear. I had the shovel and shit. And like yeah. I was fucking with those, I was fucking with those New York people because I really don't like New York people the most. <laughs> so so like um like I would look at I would look at one person and I would be talking to the other person. You know, I would fuck with them because I had the gimmick on or whatever. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I hear this. Pogo. Like from the, you've been, a, you remember how big, Viking Hall wasn't that big, so you could hear across right. the room. Right. Pogo. And then I heard like maybe three or four times, somebody shouting my name out. So like I looked over that way and I seen this blonde fuck in like a cut off yellow shirt. And like I'm thinking, okay, like okay, like what's this motherfucker want? Because I, I swear I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who the fucking guy was. Right. Okay. right. So so I went up to him and he's like, Hey man, you know, I called you like five times. You know, do you know who I am? And I'm all I really don't know who you are, cousin. And he goes, mm -hmm. I'm the franchise. <laughs> And I go, what? Because I'm a pothead cousin. I'm I'm always loaded. I'm a what? <laughs> Who, what? What do you? What? What the fuck is a franchise? You know, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> What's a franchise? So, so so then he he looks at me and he goes, yeah, man. He goes, they want me to talk to all you all and like um and like dial you dial all you all in on your gimmicks. You know, to to try right. to bring you up here to bring you up here. Oh, go the clown. Wow. Unbelievable. This guy still to this day, intense. This guy still to this day. I mean, he commands respect. He's awesome, but he's a brother for life. Again, like I said before, if he's your friend, he's there for life. If he's not your friend, clear the path. Yeah. Pogo the clown. Thumbs up. Thank you, big man, for being a part of this. Now, in and out of the ring, these guys were kind of tight. They were close. And I'm talking about another NorCal guy, Steve Rosano. Yeah, the gigolo, Steve Rosano. <clears throat> of course, he was managed by Playboy Buddy Rose, the late great, the legendary Playboy Buddy Rose. 
Rosano was kind of a, at the time, late 90s, early 2000s, he was kind of a throwback to kind of the old 60s, 70s, 80s heel, uh, cocky heel, you know, and um, it was it was a nice, it was a nice, refreshing aspect at the time uh, in XPW. So right now, crazy moment in XPW. We talked about um, paying tribute earlier, uh, but right now I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the late, great Supreme, the true king of the death match. Uh, of course, we talk about him a lot on Extreme Memories, uh, him, Dynamite D, and all the fallen stars. But I want to bring him up right now uh, as we lead into this next clip with Steve Rosano. The event was XPW's Rapture at the famed Los Angeles Grand Olympic Auditorium. What made this event famous was a night that lives in infamy, horrific. And it was the night that the late great Supreme, I mean, literally got caught on fire. I'm sure you fans have seen the footage time and time again, going through a table too much fluid, the wrong kind of fluid. The fluid didn't burn enough before Supreme hit it. And man, oh man, um, so lucky, so fortunate that it didn't turn out to be worse. But I could still smell the air in the Grand Olympic Auditorium. I'm talking halfway up. I myself was sitting at the broadcast table and it was hovered in smoke burnt flesh, burnt human flesh. You could smell throughout the arena that night. No joke. It happened in XPW. It happened at Rapture. It happened at the Grand Olympic Auditorium. And it happened where we actually talk about that moment because Steve Rosano was a part of that. Steve Rosano was one of the guys that doused that table in lighter fluid. He's going to talk about that a little bit. It was the wrong kind of fluid. And again, it was poured on to excess to where it didn't have to be that much fluid. And it was lit a little too late. They needed to let that fire burn and burn off the fuel and then put Supreme through. They lit it. It was a puddle. Supreme lands in the puddle. The rest is history. So Steve Rosano was there. He was in the ring. He was part of that when this happened. And I sit down, I talk to him about this. And man, oh man, it is intense, just like that night was. Rest in peace, big man supreme, Steve Rosano, the best of 2021 Extreme Memories Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Enjoy this one. Well, what happened was somebody bought a... Uh barbecue fluid yeah instead of lighter fluid because lighter fluid has a heavy alcohol intake it goes out quick right barbecue fluid does not and that's what they got and then i was nervous i was very uncomfortable doing it i said yeah. i said this is a bad idea can we do something else i've never done this before and i'm like no we're gonna do it it's okay you'll be fine do this do that blah blah, blah. and i was uncomfortable with it i didn't i had a bad feeling i just mm -hmm. had a bad feeling I, I was something was bothering me i don't know what it was angel on my shoulder whatever uh, and what had happened was we poured it all over the table and then it pulled off the table and made a pool on the mat right so when he hit he hit the fire and then lit on fire and then landed in the puddle and that it was and then by the time i was standing above him in shock and i i, I slowed to slowly reach like this and he's already gone and i i was thinking about just diving on him and I think another aspect of that that's important to mention is once the fluid was on the table, and like you said, I mean, you got a better vantage point than anybody, yeah. like all, all the all you guys that were in the ring, but the table had fluid all over it. It got lit, but, but like a half a second after it was lit, Supreme got thrown into it. So yeah. it wasn't like, let's put the fluid down, light it, 
let it burn off. Yes. To disintegrate, then put Supreme through. Yeah. So, I mean, it could have happened at any time. The timing, being in the ring and all, you know, and all you guys were doing it together. So it yeah. wasn't like, uh, the communication just has to be perfect. It, not, it isn't always that way, you know? And that was one of the things that, that I think it's important to mention again, that it was, it was the, um, the fluid didn't burn all the way. So when he, like you said, when he got put into it, it was still all wet in the fluid head. So that fluid was burning on him. That yeah. was a scary night. Well, it was meant to burn because it's barbecue fluid. And there was a barbecue. <laughs> that night. That so it fun. wasn't going to go out anytime soon. Even if we patted him out, I don't think it would have gone out. We'd have had to have wet towels and water or whatever, but that was a night I always regret. That was a night I wish I had stood my ground more and refused to do it. Thank um, you, Steve Rosano, for being part of Extreme Memories. Folks, my name is Chris Kloss. This is the best of 2021, this very special edition of Extreme Memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. We hope you all are enjoying it. Well, we hope you all enjoyed the first half of 2021. Six months down and six months to go in 2021. Steve Rosano sharing that unbelievable story with his involvement at XPW's Rapture with the big man, rest in peace, Supreme, the king of the death match for life. Now we go to one of the originals, man, and this guy, talk about a guy, no disrespect at all, who did not get his due. This guy was very respected in the back, very respected in the locker room, and he goes back quite a ways before XPW to a place that we talk about quite often here on Extreme Memories, Slammer's Wrestling Gym. Oh, man, this place was a relic uh, at, at the time. Uh, when indie shows were unheard of almost anywhere in the United States, and uh, <clears throat> they had a museum there, everything, and he was a big part of this super old-school place that I ended up being a part of right before the dying days of Slammers. And, um, but yeah, it was uh, Carlito Montana and um, a mat technician. Uh, this guy really had it all inside the squared circle. And uh, once again, great reconnecting with this guy. Again, we go way back, even before XPW. So um, Carlito, like I said, he was skilled. He was skilled, and any of the boys in the back could tell you that and uh, could vouch for that uh, to the point where um, going back to Slammers Wrestling Gym, who came out of Slammers? Beautiful Bruce Bodine, who was, of course, Ed Ferrara. And Ed Ferrara was an intricate part of the Attitude Era uh, in the WWF, WWE. And he was, of course, tight with all of us that went through slammers to the point that when Ed worked for WCW later on, well, Carlito Montana had a meeting with him, had potential with WCW. And we're going to take a look at the clip where Carlito shares that. And um, Damian Steele was kind of involved in this as well. So, man, if there's any guy that deserved that shot, especially in that squared circle was my guest at this time on Extreme Memories. Let's take a look back on this, the best of 2021 Extreme Memories, Galito Mandana. The next XPW show, I'm sitting there chatting with somebody and Mike Modest comes up to me. And I wrestled Mike Modest. And, you know, it was one of those things. He was a Northern California guy. And I didn't really know him well. And I didn't know how people liked me or not. So I was always kind of a little – I wasn't trying to be standoffish. I just didn't know – I didn't know. I didn't know locker room right. etiquette. So – but I like I liked Mike. I thought Mike was really cool. I thought he was actually like – we actually shared a lot of like, you know, interests like movies and stuff, horror movies. And he goes, hey, uh, Carlitos, i got to talk to you, man. Hey, I got somebody on the phone that needs to talk to you. And it was Ed. And he goes, Hey, brother. Yeah, oh, my God. Hey, what's going on? I'm super excited. He goes, Hey, listen, I don't have a lot of time. Listen, I need a videotape of you and, and give me a, maybe a headshot and I'll get you in. After 10 years 
of busting my ass, I, I actually have an opportunity, a possible opportunity to, to wrestle for WCW. One of the, you know, I don't care if it was going down. I didn't know. I was still. No knew. Yeah, no one knew. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I got a chance to actually get in. But I had right. That's right around the time I had that conversation with Tracy Smothers, and it was a reality check. And the reality was, how much more do I want to sacrifice? Wow. And, and the answer was, I didn't want to sacrifice anymore. Fans, welcome back to Extreme Memories, the best of 2021. I'm your host, Chris Claus. Thank you, Carlito Montana, for being a part of this and sharing your extreme memories fans extreme memories on the 15th and the 30th of every month what a year it's been 2021 even in 2020 when we kicked it off and we're looking forward to 2022 if you haven't done so subscribe to the wrestling chatter youtube channel now carlito montana goes back and so does this guy my pal my best friend in xpw i would say he is check this out guys That's right, Monchi Chi. I mean, look at this. That's him. That is him, ladies and gentlemen. That is referee Danny Monchi Chi Ramirez. He looked just like these little fur balls. Find out how he got that name. We're going to get into that right now. He was known in the back as the Monch, Monchi Chi. Of course, you guys knew him in XPW as referee Danny Ramirez, my best friend, my compadre. I mean, me and him, him and I go way, way back. Still great friends to this day. And it was a joy having him on. Of course, he's doing so much with GXW TV, Global Extreme Wrestling. Uh, check the full episode out of his to find out more about that. But Danny talks about how he got that name. It's obvious how he got that name, Manchi Chi. But he talks in detail about that. He also talks about, as an Angelino himself, growing up in L.A., how important, how impactful it was to him to perform at the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena. Danny, when he was a little guy, he when he was little, he was about the size of a Manchichi doll. If you know him now, he's a full-grown man, very short, very, very very, very short guy. Napoleon complex? Uh-uh. Danny Ramirez complex. Now, when he was about the size of a Manchi Chi doll when he was a kid, he was there at the LA Sports Arena for WrestleMania 2. He was there at the LA Sports Arena for WrestleMania 7 and all the shows in between and after. And how was it to him when he got to step into that ring in the hallowed halls of the LA Sports Arena? We talk about that. We talk about the Manchi Chi, we talk about my pal, my friend, Danny Ramirez. Right, that but then Rob Black, Rob, Black, Rob Black named you Manchi Chi. Oh, do you remember that day? We're going to, I'm going to put a link in the description. And, <laughs> and, and, and there, is a, there is a famous 80s doll toy called Manchi Chi, Manchi Chi. Also oh, something oh. called a leap. Do, 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 do. And, and it's a little puppet. Actually, while we're talking about this, I'll get a picture. And then we were in the office once, and I go, where's that Danny Ramirez? Where's that referee that, 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 that what is he? He looks like, uh, what are those things? The, the, the fucking Manchichi. Look at this guy. He looks uh, just like the fucking Manchichi. But he, he, was, he was walking towards me. And he was looking for me. He looked at me, and because back then I didn't shave back then, you know, because I was I was hairy everywhere, you know. Yeah. He saw me. He looked at me. He goes, "What the fuck? What the fucking hair your fucking face? What the fuck? You look like a fucking machi chi doll." And that was it. And it, and he stayed with me since, you know. Which yeah. I don't mind, you know. Dude, it's great. dude, we're gonna show a picture of machi chi, and that's <laughs> and then, that's why I my hair. And then, <laughs> and then and then when he said that in the in the uh in the meeting when he said my sheet the whole place was like oh yeah yeah it's a totally <laughs> <laughs> yeah <it's funny. laughs> right but um okay so so man so that first show danny and then and then from there what was it what did it mean to you brother when we started doing shows at the la sports arena 
Oh, wow. Well, first, like, for example, the country club, I love that venue because of the concerts. I saw Metallica, Slayer yeah. there. And and when I was able to do the show there, I was like, oh, wow. You know, and back in the locker room, they're like, hey, man, here's where my, my favorite band dress, here's where they party, you know? So then we go to LA Sports Arena, and I went to two WrestleManias there. I went to WrestleMania second, and I went to WrestleMania seven. Right. So I, I just remember seven. like standing behind the curtain, and I'm standing, and I'm looking, and, and, I, and I pick out the curtain. I'm looking at the sports arena. I'm thinking, wow, this is fucking awesome, you know? I'm cheap, cheap. I'm cheap. Oh, it's something kind of. And finally, his thumb in your mouth, and it's really neat. And you tickle in the feet a lot. I got that jingle stuck in my head now. Danny Monchi Chi Ramirez, thank you so much for being a part of XPW, for being a part of Extreme Memories, and for being my friend, Danny Monchi Chi Ramirez. And you were there for a lot of people. I mean, from when they were little. They used to hold you. They used to play with you. And they used to, you know, the dog would chew you up and spit you out. You know, it would get all ripped up. And the kids would still keep you around. And then it got kicked to the curb finally when the 80s was done, the Monchi Chi dolls. But Monchi Chi, hey, A number one in my book, buddy old pal, Monchi Chi Danny Ramirez. Now, we go, oh, this guy, cool guy, awesome. Great to reconnect with him as well on Extreme Memories, and this, by the way, is the best of 2021, and we're going to go back in time and talk to Josh Lazy. Now, just like Mike Hartsfield, this guy was another music legend, a music icon. He was in Danzig. We talk all about that. We were musical brothers as well. He was a big Scorpions guy, UFO guy. Those two bands joined together like the Misfits and Danzig. This guy was there. Josh Lazy, and then he was there in XPW. One of the reasons why we got into the famed Hollywood Palace on Hollywood and Vine. I mean, a historic music venue. Big deal for wrestling to be in a venue like that at that time. And then Josh Lazy became a very integral part behind the scenes in XPW. He was a leader of sorts, and he managed one of the great legends, Sabu. Now, when we talked about Sabu on the best of 2021 and went back in time to see his interview, so important that we talked about the biggest missed opportunity in all of wrestling, especially in XPW, obviously, and that was the Onita Sabu steel cage ring explode exploding ring death match that was supposed to have been held the first time it would have been done in North America. It didn't happen. We got his retrospective thoughts about that. Now, that same topic, we're going to get how Lazy thought about it, what he thought. And he shares also not only about it not happening, but what led up to that being an idea, being a thing that we never saw unfold in XPW. This is Chris Kloss. You're going to be hearing me and Josh Lazy right now as we take a look back at 2021, the best of Extreme Memories, a very special edition for you folks right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Enjoy. We'd go meet Onita, and Sabu would say, this is the idea, and I'd sell the idea. And we went back and forth a couple times to Japan. We were talking with Onita and saying, like, this is what we want to do. And Onita loved it. He he wanted to do an exploding barbar match in in the United States forever. I guess it was close to happening in ECW, right? And something didn't happen. And he was he was psyched on it. He loved the promotion. He loved what we were doing. Him and Sabu were super tight. Yeah. And we had it. And we had it sold. And we did the press conference. And we did everything. And it was like, I think we got banned from TV for. Uh, so, um, so, so I'll, I'll interject just to answer that, which was, um, we were, we were syndicated cause we were on KGLA here in LA and that was a syndicate of the America one, uh, network, which we were, we were on in pockets of North America. Now America one took us off. We eventually got it back, 
but America One took us off. So then we had a lull where we were just on KGLA. But the reason is, and, and maybe you'll remember this now, was when on, on, the, uh, on the angle where you guys knock on the office, where are you? And he pissed on the Japanese flag. Yeah, which was just yellow Gatorade or whatever it was. I don't know, but yeah. but um, it's yellow Gatorade. Like we weren't that sophisticated. To, that was like that was the level of our sophistication. We we're like, just get some Gatorade, you know. Yeah. Like, but but yeah. So I mean, of all the sex, the whatever, the the violence, the the yeah. cussing, the drugs, or whatever storyline, it was the Japanese flag. Dude. Yeah, it, it it wasn't that Lizzie was getting power bombed through a flaming table or guys were bleeding like stuck pigs all over the place or, but it, it was pissing on the japanese yeah guy. yeah and then but then it, like like i said we did eventually get it back but no that was to answer your question of all the stuff you know like it said the fire in the hotel lying to the fire marshal it was the fucking flag that was yellow gatorade basically got poured on top of it <laughs> but but um no but Please uh, continue because I just no, but that is that was the official reason at the time why we got kicked off. Yeah, so we did the press conference and we did everything, and I mean, the truth of it is, is Rob just wanted to do it himself. He didn't. He just didn't. He didn't get who Onita is or was. Yes, there was a money thing. Yeah, but I mean, can you fucking imagine? The old, like this small promotion from the valley comes out of nowhere like a fucking comet, a runaway train, and they go from, from, you know, doing bumps at the fucking Vogue Theater on Hollywood Boulevard to having Sabu and Onita headline in an exploding barbed wire match the first time in the U.S. history. Josh Lazy talking about a historic moment, a moment that should have been in professional wrestling, a moment that should have been in the United States, a moment that should have been in XPW, so close to happening. Um, a lot of history was made in XPW, and that would have been no exception. Speaking of no exception, as far as history being made in the Grand Olympic Auditorium, uh, an event that we didn't do, we didn't have at the Grand Olympic Auditorium, but a little bit of an arch nemesis, an arch rival at the time of XPW, ECW Heatwave, Heatwave 2000. Now, look, it's arguable, it's debatable that one of the reasons, many reasons why XPW will be remembered was because of the involvement in ECW Heatwave 2000 in LA. Now, we've all heard the stories, you know, myself and Messiah. Homeless Jimmy, Christy Mist, oh, Chaos Supreme, and again, myself, we're all sitting ringside, literally, first row at the Grand Olympic, up top in the first row in the Loge Colonnade Concourse section was Kevin Kleinrock and the rest of the crew in the front row up top. <sighs> One of those guys, Guido. Mark Mancini. You remember that guy? Hey, you dumb sons of bitches. That's right. That's what he would say. He was the heel, the heel ring announcer in XPW in the LA Sports Arena days and all that. Reseda Country Club. Um, so he was there. And uh, we used to live kind of close to each other in the San Fernando Valley. So he and I would carpool a lot, whether to the meetings uh, at the XPW offices or to live events. And uh, so we were at Heat Wave 2000. Now, I was sitting down ringside in the danger zone. He was up top. And um, we've all heard the stories, once again, of what went down that day. It's all over the, the World Wide Web. And, of course, we've covered it here on Extreme Memories. But uh, I have got to share this with you, man. If you guys know Guido like I do and like the rest of us knew him, Oh, Guido. Anyway, take a listen to this. This was our experience involving Guido. I mean, you've heard all the stuff I went through outside when we got kicked out and it was all the chaos. But once that was dying down and I was dodging bullets, I had to find this guy. I was his ride home. Hey, man, I'm not going to leave him down there, you know. And check this out when I found him. 
what was going through the head of this Guido character. Take a look. Right. It was it was it was out the Olympic to the left. Yeah. Uh, north, just north of the Olympic. I want to right, north. right. Yeah. So so I'm I'm outside. The chaos is going on. Mayhem. I finally break free. It's like we don't want any trouble. I'm going to my car. As I'm going to my car, Big Sal's kind of staring me and, and a, a couple others down. But again, it was like 20 on two or three. Right. It was unfair. And then the ECW guys also attacked a ring girl, XPW ring girl. Very shameful. We talked about that before. But um, but nonetheless, um, I go to my car. I'm like, damn, where's Guido? Where's Guido? And then I see New Jack. He was with ECW still. Comes out. He wanted to beat somebody up. I'm like, dude, I got to get out of here. I, I don't know what's going to happen. And then I see you on the south end, all the way on the other end of the Olympic. And I'm like, Guido, get over here, get over here. And you were talking to someone and you're like, me? Yeah, okay. So you run over all the way from the Olympic to my car. You get in the car and then you know what you said to me? You said, can you believe that? Did you see all that? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I can't believe it. What, what did you see? And then you're like, oh, I can't believe it. Them guys are great fans. They wanted my autograph because they know me at the sports arena. <laughs> so I'm like, did you see what happened, Guido? Did you freaking see what happened? You're talking about <laughs> himself again, dude. You did it. You, this is like you came to the car with this big update. Did you see that? And it was because some fans wanted your freaking autograph. Dude. I'm like, no, oh, dude, the pay per view, it's good. It got destroyed with the whole invasion. <laughs> so, yes, folks, that's what Guido was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was had to share hilarious. it. I'm sorry, man. I think that's one of the funniest stories ever. Yeah, it yeah. was. Well, we, 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 we did a lot, man. Even before the rest. I mean, just going to the beach, playing football in the sand, man. Unbelievable stuff we did, man. That guy's for real, ladies and gentlemen. That's how he really is in real life. Guido. Gosh! Thank God that part of the best of 2021 Extreme Memories is all said and done. Now, we want to thank you fans once again for joining us. My name is Chris Kloss. We are now on the second half of 2021. The best of this very special episode of Extreme Memories presented right here on December 30th, 2021. And we are just days away from a happy new year. And we want to wish all you fans a very happy, healthy, safe new year. And uh, man, go to the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. We got a lot in store for 2022. Not only Extreme Memories, we got something else up the old sleeve we're going to tell you about in a little bit. Now, the next episode we're going to show you clips from, like this episode, was a very special first time for Extreme Memories. Two for the price of one, two guests. And they were two Larry Rivera's on the same episode. Personally, this was important to me, I, I will admit. Maybe a little selfish on my end. I work with Pat Howard, the original Larry Rivera, and I work with Gabriel Ramos, the second Larry Rivera, who later on became Juan Tastico. Thank goodness. Now, these guys, I love both these guys to death. I love working with both these guys. It was a lot of heat going on at this time, a lot of controversy from Pat, the original Larry, leaving XPW in the fashion that he did in the big blow up between him and XPW CEO Rob Black. And who stepped in? Larry Rivera number two, Gabriel Ramos, Juan Tastico. Now, these guys, um, it wasn't personal, but it was. Naturally, there was going to be some heat. Gabriel was a good friend of mine. And even though Pat looked at him as the enemy at the time, finally these two got together. They had one meeting back in the day after the big blow up happened. And we're going to go to that right now. But right here on Extreme Memories was the very first time that these two 
came together privately or publicly. They did it publicly on Extreme Memories. They talk all about that heated meeting that they had back in the day after Gabriel became Larry 2 and Larry 1 was there in the back at another wrestling show, a local wrestling show. They had a confrontation in the back and they're going to talk all about that right now on this, the best of 2021, the very special edition of Extreme Memories on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Enjoy this one. Met and, and kind of ran into Pat Larry at an indie show after you became fake Larry and something to where you were in a mask or something like that. And there, there was a, a confrontation with you two, was there not? Or do you remember too, Pat? Uh, was this at a Henry Luna show? That is correct. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do remember that day. Uh, the, the just bits and pieces. But uh, I don't know if Henry did it on purpose to, oh. <laughs> to, to, get, to get stuff going. But I don't, know if, I don't know if I got in the ring and said something uh, or if I said it on the side, but I remember saying something. And again, you know, 20 years ago, uh, maybe Juan Tassico, you, you, you have a better memory, but, uh, you know, it, it was, it was, and that was right in the midst of things. So, right. you know, and you've got, you got people on the sides, you know, urging right. you on, Hey, Hey, you know, this dude's here, this dude's here. Hey, what are you going to do? What are you gonna, it's like, man, shit, you know, well, and, um, and, and if I'm not too mistaken, that wasn't too far after the the Messiah stuff, right? Right. Or, or, or before. Right, right around that time. That, that was right around that time. And 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 I thought, well, shit, man, if th this stuff happens, you know, you know, it, it started getting crazy. So, but... Uh, that was the only interaction you guys had after that, right? After that, yeah, pretty uh, much. Up until right now, this very moment, that was wow, the, yeah. the last time I I, I uh, put late eyes on or heard from uh, Pat was that was the last time, and it was it was uh, uh, Henry Henry Luna was trying to um, he had his vision of of uh, of uh, the the ultimate or the pantheon of, of, of West coast wrestling. He, he had a vision for, for, for wanting to do, you know, better than XPW, better than everything that was out there. That was, that was his, his vision, his dream. And, uh, he, something he, he, he sold me on something he had been around. He had seen me wrestle and he really, really liked the way I wrestled. And he really had big plans for Golden State Championship Wrestling. And he he had done, to my knowledge, the show that I did was like his first show, and it was his 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 practice show, how he was gonna go. But he um it was a it was a big secret, it was a big kayfabe that he wanted me to 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 be his be one of his number one guys. Um and and I knew that he wanted Pat to be his to be his uh his voice whether it was behind the camera in the ring or whatever, but he had told me he wanted Pat to be his man. And he wanted, he wanted to make sure we, Pat and I were okay. He asked me, are you going to be okay? I'm like, yeah, man, it's your show. I got, I got no issue with Pat. I go, my only issue is, and at the time um, I was very much under contract with the FPW. I was not allowed to, I was not supposed to be doing any kinds of other shows. I, I had been warned not to do any other kinds of shows because when, um, Going back to when uh, I had first gone into XPW, even though I didn't have a gimmick or a character, I was doing little in like all star all star wrestling and other little shows and VAs and uh, VFWs or whatever. And Kevin told me, no, 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 yeah. you cannot do that. And I was still, you know, doing uh, different masked gimmicks, and I was told not to. So you're a talent here. Don't wrestle anywhere else. So. Um, Knowing that, and then you know, fast forward to Henry Luna, and he asked me to do it as a kind of a test, uh, my co my my commitment to him under a mask. And and so I, I had this this mask, um, and I I went all out. I was really worried that someone at XPW would find out, so I went all out on the gimmick. 
Um, Henry promised me he wouldn't tell anyone. No one would know except Pat. He said it was important for Pat and I to 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 have a talk. To something was going to happen. He said he was going to clear out the the locker room, and that you know we we should we should talk. Um, I didn't know what that meant. I don't know if you know Pat was going to take a swing at me. I, I had no idea what that meant. But for Henry had sold me on his vision of GSCW. Moving forward, I thought it was important because I believed in it. And so I, you know, took a chance wrestling somewhere else while under contract for XPW. I did everything I could to, you know, cover the gimmick. I had fake tattoos on my arms and I had the mask on. I even took a, a co my cousin to act as my translator. <laughs> and and so I pretended I didn't speak I didn't speak English. And so Whatever was being said to me by anybody, I was in full mask the whole time I was there. I never took off my mask in the back or the front, whatever. And they would just talk to me. My cousin would just repeat what they said in Spanish, which obviously I didn't need a translator. But I was, you know, just kind of looking at people and just letting the translator do his job. And I was really trying to, you know, keep kayfabe the whole thing. And then the time came and, and um, he cleared, you know, Henry cleared out the locker room. And, and I, you know, to this day, I wasn't sure if, if you know, my impression of it is was Pat got to say his piece to me, but I was there. I was behind the mask and I know that he spoke to me, but I could see from Pat's point of view, he was basically talking to a dude in a mask because I didn't take off my mask. We didn't make eye contact. He was just told that's him. Mm. So if you want to say something to him, now's your chance to say something to him. But it's not like I said, hey, Larry, sorry about, like, I kept the mask on. I kept the gimmick on the whole time. And I didn't I didn't say anything. I didn't respond. I just, like, whatever Pat said, I just basically nodded. And then that was it. He, he said his piece to me. And I, you know, can't say I disagreed with a single word he said because he was right about it all. And um, I didn't respond. And then after that, uh, he went professionally. He went up front. He introduced me. Introduced my gimmick, did a wrestling show, and you know I did did the match and yeah we left. Fans, Chris Claus back here with the best of 2021 extreme memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel, and that was a first. Just like this is a first, that was a first. Two guests at one time, and man, um, it was a bit of bearing of the hatchet once again. It was great to get Pat Hoed, Larry One, and Gabriel Ramos, Larry Two slash Wantastico on at the same time we even had that invisible handshake at the end for those of you that watched the complete episode but i urge you guys that's a very interesting episode having both of them on having both their uh sharing their perceptions their unique perceptions of the same vehicle which was xpw and their thoughts and uh it was great being back on the mic in this forum, Extreme Memories, with them. But that was the first time, not only for them two to be together, but the first time for all three of us to be talking in any fashion at all in public right here on Extreme Memories. Now, uh, what can I say about my next? Oh, yeah. Jasmine St. Clair. Yes. The original diva of XPW, Jasmine St. Clair. Of course, she was a big name already in the adult entertainment industry at mainstream at the time. Again, speaking of Howard Stern, she was all over on his show. She was everywhere. And she was in XPW. She was an original contract girl for Extreme Associates. Of course, the parent company of XPW, also headed by Rob Black. Now, uh, it was only a natural transition, a natural fit for her and other gals in the adult world to be a part of XPW, the edginess of XPW. Now, speaking of that, of course, Wrestling Chatter right here, YouTube presents Extreme Memories, and Extreme Memories is about the early days of XPW. But during this run uh, on Extreme Memories, during the show, during production, as most of you all know, a big story hit the wrestling world news uh, while this was going on, and that is XPW coming back. And that is what we are 
inclined to talk about sometimes. Again, this is designed for the old days of XPW, but it's hard to escape the conversation now about XPW relaunching. So Jasmine St. Clair shared a little bit of that. She also shared about her relationship with Rob Black, the highs and lows, the trials, the tribulations, and her exodus from the company uh, that wasn't on smooth ground, a little rocky, if you will. Uh, she shares her story about that. She also shares her opinion, her perception of what she thinks Rob Black was and is today in regards to the new XPW. Let's take a listen to what oh, yeah, Jasmine St. Clair has to say. I got to calm down. No, that's no. What we, we, we ended on bad terms, and I just feel as though that's bad. And a lot of time has gone by. And like you said, I mean, I've had a couple conversations with him recently, and he's the same. He's not the same, but he's still the same. You know what I mean? And that's cool. Do you think – Do you let me ask you this then. Speaking of that, Jasmine, of course, this show, really, we're talking about the original days of XPW, which is what this show is about. But, of course, that's this is in the news now. Of course, that, that XPW is relaunching. It's, there's a rebirth. Um, do, do you feel like saying what you said, that Rob Black – and I understand completely – that he's the same, but he's not – do you think that he will have the same edge that he had back then? A hundred percent. Because people yeah. like that always do. You always do, believe me. I mean, I could listen to myself 20 something years ago talking on Stern. It's the same shit I'd say today. I'm just more refined. I'm the same asshole that right. I am today. Same, I, I get I get that totally, yeah. A hundred percent, I could still sit here and say, People in the adult film business, I mean, I'm surprised they could read and construct a sentence in English. Yeah, Jasmine St. Clair. Whoa, what memories right there. A couple of nice memories. I'm, I'm sorry. Jasmine St. Clair, no joke. A big part of the company. Oh, man, was she a distraction to us guys in the back. But really, the edginess, the rawness that was XPW. It wasn't just the blood and guts. It was pushing the envelope on all ends, and the girls of XPW were no exception. And Jasmine St. Clair was there from day one and uh, got a lot of eyeballs on the product. Mainstream as well. She was a big name at that time. Now, going from Jasmine St. Clair to where it got really nasty, really uh, down, bloody, dirty. We're talking paying your dues, the training ground. The Asylum, that's right, the XPW Professional Wrestling Training Academy. It was headed by guys like the late, great Dynamite D, the awesome Damian Steele, the real deal. And the school was filled with guys that went on to do amazing things in wrestling. And one of those guys that now today is a mentor to a lot of people is Robbie Phoenix. Now, Robbie Phoenix never competed in the original XPW, but he was there at XPW's cold day in hell. And uh, man, this guy, another class act. Uh, a lot of guys look up to him now uh, in the ranks of professional wrestling, especially at this part of the country. Um, but Robbie Phoenix, like a lot of guys, a lot of us guys, when we first started out, what did we do? Hey, you got to put the ring together. You got to load it up in the truck. You got to drive this guy this way and all, and, you know, security, all that stuff. And um, Robbie was an integral part of the company while he was paying his dues. And uh, we heard a little bit from Steve Rosano earlier on in this, the best of 2021 Extreme Memory special episode. And we talked about the infamous night at the Grand Olympic Auditorium, XPW's Rapture where Supreme literally, literally got let on fire. Burnt flesh was smelt throughout the arena. Luckily, the uh, you know the insurance company and all that and the uh, heads of the Olympic didn't uh, weren't there to witness that smell. Otherwise, the show would have been shut down. Who knows? We may not have been welcomed back at that point. You can't smell it when you watch it on TV, and you know the footage that I'm talking about. Now, 
this kind of happened by accident during my interview with Robbie Phoenix, but I asked him if he was part of the security team, part of the ring crew, uh, the crew that was around the ring during those days. And he was, he was there and he was there at XPW Rapture. Now he shares his story, but it was, again, it was an incidental, this kind of happened by accident here on the show. I just happened to ask him about it. And he ends up clearing the air on something that he's been waiting a long time to do. And it just so happened that it took place during my interview with him on Extreme Memories regarding Supreme and that near fatal night when he got set ablaze. This is Robbie Phoenix. My name is Chris Kloss, and this is the best of 2021 Extreme Memories special episode year in review. Take it uh, away. Yes. Um, so uh, story be- a little story behind that was uh, after, uh, you know, everything was said and done in Supreme, you know, got his burns and went to the burn ward. Uh, I got the blame for that, for, for letting Supreme burn. Um, oh, so yeah. that night we were given, I was given a fire extinguisher, and I think I don't remember who else had fire extinguishers, but the spot of that was supposed to be Supreme goes through the table. We have to run in the ring, turn the table off. Supreme wasn't supposed to catch on fire. Um, um, okay. Yeah. So whoever, you know, whoever was uh, responsible for getting uh, the lighter fluid to light the table got the wrong lighter fluid. Right. We so, talked talked to Steve Rosano on, on this show and he kind of he talked all about that and he yeah everything you're saying right now basically is what he said and it was basically the fault of the, the what kind of fluid it was so yeah so that's when it so once they lit it and put Supreme through it obviously it didn't go out the way it was supposed to um so as soon as I saw Supreme go through it I didn't see Supreme roll out on fire yeah. isolated and turn the table off Right. So as I'm putting the table off, people are calling me, calling my name, turn around. So I turn around. That's when I see him on fire. So I started shooting him with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Uh, so everyone at the end of it was, who the fuck is that fucking idiot? Why the fuck did he go turn off the table instead of Supreme? Well, because I didn't see Supreme on fire. My job, I was told, was to go put out the fire on, in the ring. So as soon as Supreme went through, I didn't see him roll, roll out on fire. I slid in. I started putting out the table. Um, and you know, I, I felt bad because everyone was saying, hey, bro, they're, they're you know, kind of pissed at you. And I felt bad because, like I said, Supreme was another guy who was, you know, not, you know, D was my trainer and mentor, but Supreme was kind of my mentor, too, because he would come in and run some classes and I, I would get to be a part of them. Yeah. Um, so he was kind of a mentor, too. So when when that happened, yeah, I felt bad. I'm like, dude, like, it's my fault that he fucking burned. Are you fucking serious? Fans, welcome back to Extreme Memories. Robbie Phoenix, thank you so much for being a part of this. Hey, this guy learned a whole hell of a lot at the XPW's Asylum, the Pro Wrestling Training School of XPW. And he is teaching, he is mentoring now a whole hell of a lot to the young crop coming up in professional wrestling, especially on this side of the country. Thank you so much, Robbie Phoenix. Again, a class act all the way. This is Extreme Memories, ladies and gentlemen, the best of 2021. And this is a very special episode. Speaking of special episodes, whoa, did we have a special one for all of you? And that was when the night Vice TV's Dark Side of the Ring aired and it featured XPW, Extreme Pro Wrestling. A lot of you know all about that. We all watched and wanted to see how our story was going to be told of XPW. So we needed to get it from the horse's mouth. That's right. So I interviewed moments after that aired. We went live right here exclusively on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel with a very special live edition of Extreme Memories. And it featured, you want to talk about having guests. You thought, Gabriel, Wantasco, and Rivera was a lot. Uh-uh. It was myself, Chaos, Jezebel, the great Patrick Hernandez, Luke Hawks, Wantastico, the Messiah, Mike Hartsfield, Larry Rivera, Phenomenal Phil, 
And Leroy, the ring crew guy, we were all there and we needed to let the public know what we really thought and maybe fill in the blanks some of the things that Vice missed or some of the things they got wrong and some of the things they got right. The Messiah. And I want to thank him off the top right here, not only for this episode, the very special episode we did right after Vice TV's Dark Side of the Ring, but of course, our one on one interview we did in 2020. So transparent. This guy is an open book. And we can't thank him enough to just have the courage and be a stand up guy and be a part of this and share that for you fans. So, Billy, Messiah, from the bottom of my heart, man, thank you very much. And uh, on this moment of the Dark Side of the Ring recap show that we did, the very special live episode that we did, courtesy of the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel, we went out live moments after the Dark Side of the Ring aired on Vice TV right here on Extreme Memories. And right here, the Messiah, Billy, shares his thoughts about how he was portrayed in the Dark Side of the Ring XPW show on Vice TV. All of us start chiming in. All of us remind each other about certain memories in XPW. And, man, this was an awesome episode. It was a special episode. It was a first time for us at Extreme Memories and for the folks at the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Without any further ado, folks, enjoy this. And definitely, if you haven't done so, check this full episode out. It is full of tons of information from a multitude of different perceptions. Folks, enjoy this one. Take and looking back 20 years, you know, I can totally see it. Just, I was living in a friggin' garage. My family wasn't around me. My friends that I had since childhood, they weren't wrestling people. They liked to go snowboarding and wakeboarding. You know, I, I didn't have anybody to confide in or anything like that. And the people that I would share things with were uh, like Supreme and, and D and, and, and Joey. And I didn't tell them anything that was going on. Um, right. You know, it was just, uh, yeah, I mean, I was a 23 year old kid and, and I think I just got caught up in something. And I mean, Vice made me look like a man whore. But well, well, you, had, is, hey, you had a rocket ship on your ass, Billy. Let's yeah. be honest. You had a rocket yeah. ship on your ass. They were pushing you. And you tell me, I, and nobody can tell me, like, really. I mean, I, how many kids that you know that get success at a young age that don't do something, you know, they wouldn't do necessarily when they're 40, right? Yeah. I Come mean, on. It just, again, I, I don't beat myself up about it. It is what it is. I take responsibility for my partner. Um, uh like I said, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it didn't stop me from from wrestling or doing what I wanted to do. I mean, that's the bottom line when it when it comes to you know after what happened to me. But um, yeah, I mean, like, dude, sometimes I, I honestly, after I do an interview, like after I sat down with Chris, or even when I sat down with with, with Vice, it's like I'm driving home, going, man, just shut your goddamn mouth. Yeah. Like, dude, you don't need to like. You know, and maybe it's a form of therapy for me where I could just can like spew all the crap out. Well, um, I appreciate it. personally. Yeah. I appreciate it because this is the first time like I've even got to hear like majority of the story because I, I think you and I have probably talked about it in the past, but it, it's it's always kind of I don't bring it up. You don't bring out so many things don't talk about because you know certain things are kind of taboo. So yeah, I learned things from watching. And I was like, oh, it's nice to finally hear somebody say something, and, and especially to hear it from you. So I'll tell you, I appreciate you talking about it. So I don't know what everybody else does, but I'm thankful that you said things, yeah. and, I, and, and it doesn't justify the actions that happen against you as well. You know well, what I mean? Now, and I told, I told, and this is, this is, I mean, the thing that happened to me, the Lizzie thing played a very small part in it. I believe the reason everything happened was because, um, one, and I take full responsibility for it. Uh, you know, I had a big mouth and, um, I, I, you know, Rob was trying to intimidate me when he, when he could. And, and uh, I would hear things from the office and blah, 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 or w whatever new rumor was coming out of that place. And it was just pissing, it was pissing me off to no end because when everything happened originally with the Lizzie thing, I mean, I, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to deny it. And uh, cause in the back of my head, I, I thought I was being like the good guy. Like, okay, Hey, I, I fucked up. I know I'm out of the company, whatever it is. But, uh, 
you know, I'm not going to go and, and, and say anything or, or, and then I would hear little things or, or I would hear someone, so-and-so made a comment about something and it, it's, it just started eating away at me. Yeah. And like the thing that I said at that show with, she loves it. I had no intentions of going out there and saying anything like that. I was getting on the mic and do whatever promo it was supposed to be at the time. But New Jack had just gone out before me and was, uh, was uh, all pissed off at Rob and XPW for unpaid, whatever it was. And he had a, you know, I think he had like a, a bounce check with him in the ring and everything and da, da, da. And then new Jack threw me in there going and Messiah did it, whatever with Lizzie board or diddled or did the hee haw or whatever the hell he said with Lizzie Borden. And that, that just got the fans even more riled up. Yeah. And then I right. go out there and I'm all heated up as it is and blah. And they start chanting that. And I just open my mouth like I shouldn't. And that spews out. And as soon as I said it, I, in the back of my head, I went, oh, God damn it, Billy. Like, um, but, you know, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back is when I went to that XPW show. Yeah. I honestly I love that, that you did that, man. I love that you did that. <laughs> well, dude, I didn't even go. I wasn't going to go. But GQ Money gave me the freaking free pass. Oh, like, <laughs> that was like my favorite part of the episode. I was like, yeah. yes, fuck yeah, Billy. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. I had no intentions of going, and when I did go, I was up in the nosebleed section. I wasn't trying to be on camera or cause a disturbance or anything like that. And then the show started going to shit, and I completely forgot because uh, uh, I think it was it was Chris who told me this. Yeah, because uh, I didn't I didn't mention this to, to Vice because I completely forgot it. But yeah, some fan like jumps Rob in the ring, and I'm sure Rob That's thought right, I had something yes. to do with it. <laughs> yeah. No one Rob's warped mind. I had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Wait a so minute! A fan jumped Rob in the ring. Yeah. Yes, I remember oh. the boys gave him one. They, oh, they, dude! They gave him a dude. They gave him a right on the nose. I thought that guy was going to die. Fans, welcome back to Extreme Memories, the best of 2021. My name is Chris Kloss, and this once again a very special episode, a retrospective look at what a fabulous year this has been. And again, speaking of a special episode, that was a clip from the live edition of Extreme Memories post-show from the dark side of the ring. Where do I start? Where do I end? All 10 of us, 11 of us were on there. And man, you know, you want to talk about going back in time and <sighs> reconnecting with everybody. Uh, man, that episode, no exception. We all got to sit down like we were in the locker room, you know, back in the day. Not every single one of us, but a lot of us right there on that episode. Um, not only not only an interesting night, an interesting show, but a special show for myself. And I'm sure I can speak for everybody else. It was just awesome. And I hope you fans thought it was uh, just as awesome as we all did watching that. Thank you, fans, once again. Uh, this is a special episode. This is Extreme Memories. My name is Chris Kloss. And what a year it's been, 2021. 2020 was awesome, and we're looking forward to 2022. And before we wrap up, we got another guest right here, Michael Modest. Now, this guy was there from day one. You saw him in the movie Beyond the Mat, a big, big film in the wrestling industry, big film in general back in the day. Uh, when it aired or when it came out, that was not seen in wrestling, the dropping of kayfabe like we saw in that movie. Michael Modest was a part of that. Uh, he was a Northern California guy, uh, made quite a name for himself, and he was featured. He came down to Southern California in the early days of XPW. And right here, he's going to share his view of what he saw in Northern California of the buzz up there before XPW even had a show, there was such a buzz. So he shares that how people on the other side of the country or the other side of the state, not in Southern California viewed XPW and how much of a buzz there was at the time. A great guy, man, this is the first time I seen him since years ago. It was great reconnecting with him. This dude looks exactly the same as he did back in the day. Michael modest fans, Extreme Memories Special Edition right here. My name is Chris Claus. The year in review of 2021. Let's take you back in time and back to the interview with Michael Modest. Well, um, it was a strong, you know, of course, 
all the independent promoters, they, they want to keep their talent. So all the independent promoters were kind of like, oh, you know, it's some jabron, some guys in the porn business, got a lot of money. You know, we've seen this before. He's going to burn through his cash and close company, you know. And anybody that goes there, you know, won't won't work here again kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, I'm just not that way. I'm going to take the opportunity. And uh, I had never met Rob before. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, a lot of people, they may say whatever about Rob Black, but uh, the first day I met him, uh, he seemed really cool to me and uh, he let me stay in his house. So he opened his, opened his door to me, you know, and, uh, and I stayed the night there and, um, you know, I, I, I was always treated well by Rob and, uh, I never had any real, real problems with the guy, you know? Okay. Um, but I did realize very quickly that, um, he was kind of out there and his ideas didn't necessarily mesh or work necessarily with wrestling fans welcome back once again this is chris claus this is extreme memories a very special edition and I want to thank michael modest for being a part of this haven't seen him in years man awesome to reconnect with him very interesting guy um and thank you for sharing what you shared with us michael and we hope you fans enjoyed that as well now going back to circa early years of xpw one of the prominent tag teams, and they were a homegrown tag team in XPW, the West Side uh, West Siders, the, the West Siders. I'm talking about Chronic, and you can't talk about him, of course, without talking about his tag team partner, but the late, great big man, Big Rot. We always called him Q. And, uh, man, what a loss. What a loss, man. Um, I, I, it is sad, but there's always a smile on my face when I think of that guy. That guy made sure everybody around him was having fun. And uh, he looked menacing, man. He was one of the scariest dudes in real life. The guy was a tough SOB. But, um I mean, he sold it, man. And when he came out and Chronic was on the mic, controversial at that time, um, involving race, involving all that. And uh, that was the edginess of XPW. And uh, it was it was controversial. And, uh, man, uh, they wrote it. They wrote it right to the sunset, man. And uh, and Q rode off into the sunset himself and he's no longer with us right now. And, um, chronic was another great guy to, you know, get back in touch with. And this guy is a legend, man. This guy, again, a very respected guy in the locker room, especially. Uh, and of course Q was as well, but chronic was a little bit older, his se uh, senior to Q and a little bit of a mentor toward Q. But, um, you know, we get into all the intricacies of the West Siders as a tag team. But um we couldn't we couldn't um do this episode without finally paying our how do I say this? Uh sorry folks, how do paying our official respects to Q and we really couldn't do that completely until talking to Chronic, his tag team partner, his brother in the ring, uh, the West Siders. And um, rest in peace, big man. Again, he always made everybody smile. He always helped everybody to remember uh, why it is that we're here in wrestling. When some of us got tired of the politics, when some of us got burnt out, when some of us took ourselves a little too seriously, he was there to remind us, hey, man, Remember why we like this. Remember why we all have this in common, why we are all one in that locker room. And remember from when we were kids growing up, loving professional wrestling and helping us to remember and feel that in the back. And uh, this guy loved to laugh. 
and he was awesome. So Chronic, um, the Iceman, John Black, um, thank you, sir, for being a part of this show. Thank you for sharing your stories. And thank you for publicly, for myself, for the fans, for the rest of the XPW crew, thank you specifically for being on this show to pay proper respects to the late, great Big Rot Q. This is Chronic on Extreme Memories. Enjoy. Yeah, he he was one of the greatest guys. I mean, he just... Uh... I don't know. It's when I think about him, I, I tear him up right now just thinking about him. But uh, he really was a great guy. He was a good human being. He, he enjoyed life. Oh yeah, is what what I like to say about him. He really enjoyed life, and you know, when things were tough, uh, I could always count on Q to lift me up. So he was one of the best. He one of the best, and we we couldn't avoid interviewing you without talking about him, and we wouldn't want to not talk about him, of course. But uh, thank you. Um, yeah, man, and um, unfortunately, he passed away, obviously, and um, we pay our respects, rest in peace, and um, that goes back to the whole thing with with the gimmick because um, when I went at first in the first few shows, Banded Ventura and um, the Reseda days. Uh, I would be the ring announcer, and and the whole the whole shtick with your name was NGZ, West Side N word basically, and and but but the PG version was the West Siders. So um, he would come up to me and say, "Oh man, Klaus, you're you're as white as milk. This is perfect. Uh, you you got to go out there and you got to say this." And I'm like, "You sure you want me to say that?" He goes, "Of course I do, man, because I want to chase your ass around the ring." Da 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 da, and and and. Um, and it was it was fun, and and if you watch the footage, you think I'm going to get killed. But then once it was done, he was laughing, and oh, this is great, man! You know, and 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 it was, and, and the crowd ate it up because it was controversial, and and um, you guys played it up, man. And your promos were great, man. Like kind of legendary promos, man. Talking about with the noose and all this stuff. I mean, it was it was edgy at that time. For sure, even for especially today, but even then, it was it was edgy, and it got over. Thank you, thank you. But uh, doing that was not easy. <laughs> it yeah, was not. I remember. Easy. Can I can I just say I remember a conversation I had with you, because you and Q were doing it. You guys were bonded, but it was a little bit different for you. And I vaguely remember. I don't know if you remember. You and I were up in the loft in the Ventura Theater. And I was just kind of asking you, hey, man, what, so what do you think of this gimmick? And you basically what you're starting to say right now is I, I vaguely remember how your general energy was like, you know, what? it's it's not that easy to do this because there's so many variables to it. Right. I was I was very conscious of what he was going for with that. Uh, but I was still trying to, you know, do my job. I had to have, you know, in my mind we're here to play a role, you know, uh, I'm playing this role and it's nothing more than this role. It doesn't mean this is the way I feel or right. this is what I believe in. I'm just playing this role, but you have to get up to play that role. You know, you have to pump yourself up. You have to believe in it and you have to tell yourself, you know, if it's not me, it's just going to be somebody else. So let me, let me do it and let me do it right. So I, that's what we did. Uh, Q and I, we had conversations about that uh, on many occasions. You know, there were, you got plenty of time in the car when you're driving to a show. So, you know, we discussed it back and forth and he had his opinion and, and I had mine. And, uh, you know, it's not that we bumped heads on it. It's just that uh, we both were coming at it from a different point of view at times. Cause like I said, I was older. So, you know, right. my perspective was, I was trying to explain to him that, uh, you know, in my mind, the NGZs was never what Rob Black wanted it to be. I always told you that NGZ for me was notorious gangsters. That's all we are. So we're the West Side notorious gangsters. Oh, and right. uh, that's the way I played it in my mind. And that's what got me through it. Now, you said like you and Q didn't necessarily butt, butt heads, but uh, you guys did have 
maybe, maybe. And like you said, he was a lot younger. And, um, but for the most part, you guys did it. It came off very believable and, um, which, which sparked a lot of heat and it was very easy to get into feuds with these other tag teams and it worked. And, um, would you say Q was kind of just more, um, like, let's say maybe more like just, I'm going to go do whatever. I'm going to have fun with it. Not necessarily getting as, as introspective about it as you. Uh, yeah, well, he, he knew that the controversy was there, but he also felt, uh, you know, we should go out there and make this money because the opportunity has presented itself to us. So let's go out there and make this money, you know, because this is going to be the start to something big and we shouldn't turn it down, you know. And he was kind of right in, in that point of view as well. You know, I just wanted it to be clear to him that, you know, while we're making this money, let's not lose uh, perspective of who we are. Webster, the Iceman, John Black, chronic of the West Siders. Thank you, sir, for being a part of this and sharing your story and especially sharing your memories of the big man rest in peace big rot of the west siders that we know it <clears throat> webster the Iceman, john black chronic of the west siders thank you for being a part of this thank you for sharing your story thank you especially for sharing your thoughts of your tag team partner for life your brother for life the late great Big rot of the West Siders. We all know him as Q. Now we go to the very final episode of Extreme Memories in the year 2021. Thank you guys for being a part of this. And what a retrospective look this has been. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And thank you for your continued support of Extreme Memories. The last episode, John Weber, the stepfather, like Robbie Phoenix, he was a student of the Asylum, the Professional Wrestling Training School of XPW. He came in there and he was the host of the X show, just like the man show with Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla, a big show at that time. During that, the height of that fame, he entered the Asylum and he wanted no special treatment. And he became one of the, man, one of the great gimmicks comedic gimmick uh the stepfather unbelievable if you haven't checked that full episode out i urge you fans check that out so much that i think you'll love and be interested in uh checking that out but one of the questions that i ask everybody at the end of each interview is what do you think is the legacy or what will be the legacy of extreme pro wrestling xpw in the world of professional wrestling and we had a lot of great responses. And since this was also the last one of 2021, and man, oh man, uh, this guy's response to me, uh, the tops. And I think he summed it up better than I could have, better than a lot of people could have. John Weber, the stepfather, the final episode of Extreme Memories in the year 2021 as we look forward to more episodes in 2022 enjoy i think yeah this is a tough one notice how quiet i get that's why i like this part yes yeah <laughs> I, you know i no, i actually mean that i like this part too and no joke because man I, I that's why i asked you i want I want I, I enjoy hearing what comes out of the mind of the stepfather John Webber. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, you know, we were we were wrestling at a very specific time. It's gonna sound ridiculous, at a very specific time in human history. And it's when we got to the end of the 90s. There was that fear of the millennium. Yeah. Everybody was afraid of Y2K. Yeah. Y2K. <laughs> Careful not to say Y2J. Um, because there was this rumor going around that computers were not made 
to flip from the 1990s to the 2000s and right. everything was going to go to hell. Yeah. And whether or not that was ever true, I'm not sure it was ever true. Yeah. It, it showed a fear of the future. It showed a fear of the world that was coming. And in the 90s, it's not ridiculous to say that men were men and women were women. Yep. Not necessarily a good thing because the super macho and the super feminine were not necessarily representative of everybody mm -hmm. or of the human experience for that matter. Um, but, you know, because I was on the X show and the X show was the, the show for men and the women who put up with them. And because ECW uh, was on uh, TNN, which uh, eventually becomes Spike, and that's a man network too, um, you know, th there was this sense of manliness, yeah. of toughness, of macho, machismo. Yep. And it was reflected in DX, uh, yeah. in WWF, WWE. It was reflected in um, uh, the NWO. It was reflected by these badasses uh, in ECW who are, I, yeah. I just, I loved uh, my ECW Anarchy video game where um, Rhino, you know, you're getting ready to wrestle Rhino. He's across from you in the ring and he goes, I'm going to beat you, make you paint your nails, and you're going to be my bitch. Ah. <laughs> now, you can't do that these days. Right. Yeah. That was of a certain time. Yes. And that was the time when XPW broke out like a shark fin out of the surface of the ocean. Like broke out above everything else, I think. And took all of this uh, sort of metastasized nastiness of men, yeah. of women, of drug users, of violent people of you know gangsters and gangbangers of uh sluts and bastards and assholes and sons of bitches all of these terrible terrible people and terrible you know archetypes all in one show all represented in in one wrestling company ECW I think we all give it up to ECW ECW is the best ECW it could have been but XPW was a better ECW, frankly. I mean, I really do feel that way. I, I give it up to, to Paul Heyman. I think Paul Heyman's a genius. I think he's a great part of wrestling. But let's face it, the guy learned about wrestling at, at ringside, taking pictures the same way basically Jim Cornette did. Yeah. Like, they're basically from the same place. They didn't come from the, the place where Rob Black came from, which was being this toxic fan. Mm, interesting and being this sketchy dude this mm -hmm. really i i hope rob understands i say that with love and respect yes I, yeah but, but come on but rob it's, but it's undeniable it's undeniable that the man was a villain in a lot of ways um and and that's good that's good because at that time you got Mr. McMahon, the character Mr. McMahon, pretending to be what Rob was. Yeah. This this out of control, right. power mad megalomaniac. Right. And and so if you were a fan and you were taking that in, you are so lucky. You are so lucky because yeah, you're watching NWO and you're seeing Kevin Nash you know, pretending to be uh, a gangster rapper. Okay. All right. Fine. You know, you're, you're watching, um, you're watching WWF and there's meat and he's like, you know, the, the mascot for the women's group PMS, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's all this kind of silly stuff, but then you go to an XPW show. Man, these people look dangerous as hell. The West Siders, I remember watching them go up against um, who are the Lucha dudes? Uh, Damien uh, 666. Uh, yeah, Mexico's most wanted. Halloween, Damien 666. Do you remember uh, it was at the sports arena and um, their uh, female valet? 
Victoria. Victoria. Lady Victoria. Yep. Yep. Lady Victoria. And they power bomb her through a table. Yeah. I think this is before I'd seen the Dudleys doing that on WWF at the time. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, it was the sickest thing I'd ever seen. I was uh, backstage on a headset. I think I was um, putting people in, uh, you know, we call it gorilla position now, but, you know, I, yeah. I was helping people, you know, get ready for their cues. And I'm listening to Kleinrock, uh, who's like up in, you know, the sports announcer's booth. And I just hear him go like, oh, my God, is she OK? Is she OK? Like he had no idea that was going to happen. And I'm on the other headset and I go, I don't know. Right. How do we know? She's not moving. (laughs) Folks, in a nutshell, there you have the year 2021 on this, the best of XPW year in review. Thank you guys for joining us on this very special episode. And man, if you liked what you heard just now, I urge you go back and watch the full episodes of these interviews. Anything and everything you could think of is pretty much encompassed, captured in the full episodes of Extreme Memories. We've been here since July of 2020. A fantastic time there and a fantastic full year in 2021. And we are looking very much forward to Extreme Memories in 2022. We will see you on January 15th for our next New episodes, of course, new episodes of Extreme Memories on the 15th and the 30th of every single month. Extreme Memories on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Now speaking, this is an exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of, ow, he bit me, of the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. You've heard of spinoffs before. Well, let me spin this around. That's right. You don't see the logo anymore, do you? And that is because the Wrestling Chatter Channel is making an announcement right now. Folks, there is going to be a new series on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. And that series is going to be called Callie's Finest. There's the logo right there. Yours truly, we're going to be hosting the show. And we invite all you fans to hop on board of this exciting new venture here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. And this is an exclusive right here. Show number one is going to be with our very special guest. If you know California wrestling, you got to know the name Jesse Hernandez, the legendary Jesse Hernandez, and why he was such an integral part of professional wrestling, not only in California, but everywhere But right here, The Roots in California, Jesse Hernandez will be on the first episode of Cali's Finest right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. And that will be on the 10th of every single month, January 10th, the very first episode of Cali's Finest right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. And of course, like always, on the 15th and the 30th of every month, new episodes of Extreme Memories, everything XPW. Fans, once again, my name is Chris Kloss, and I can't thank you all enough for all your support and all the guys and gals that have been on the show, Extreme Memories. I can't thank you enough for being here, for reconnecting for sharing your stories, your memories, your extreme memories right here on Extreme Memories on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Fans, once again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And this is Chris Kloss. We are out wishing you all a happy, healthy, safe new year. We will see you next year in two days right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. More Extreme Memories and the debut of Callie's Finest. So long, everybody. Thank you for watching Extreme Memories, hosted by Chris Kloss. He's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th. You can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the Wrestling Chatter channel right here on YouTube. See you next time.